So I was reading through the Gospels. I was in Matthew uh, chapter 19. And Peter asked Jesus a pretty straightforward question. He says, look, this has cost us quite a bit to follow you. What's in it for us? Like, what will there be for us? And Jesus, he doesn't rebuke the question. He smiles and he says, oh, I tell you the truth. At the renewal of all things. When the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you, and then he gets very particular, who have lost relationships, loved ones. He even names houses and lands, careers, all your dreams, all those things you had to let go of. It will specifically be restored to you. In addition to, he says, eternal life. Mm -hmm. Now, most people think that whatever the next chapter of the story is, it's this vague thing in heaven, right? It's harps, halos, or it's the eternal church service in the sky, right? We all just, we all go up to heaven and we sing forever, right? I mean, you know. But like you point out, if it's like church services, most people, they don't want to go. They don't want to go. <laughs> but the, the key to the human heart is this. C.S. Lewis says, you can only hope for what you desire. And so if it's vague, if it's a little creepy religious, it does not bring hope, no matter how much you try and you know, breathe into it. And when Jesus promises the restoration of all things, you know, so I'm flipping through the scriptures. Peter picks up the theme in Acts. In Acts chapter 3, he says, Jesus must remain in heaven until the time comes for God to restore everything. And then the whole thing swells to a crescendo in Revelation, right? End of the book, chapter 21. He who is seated on the throne says, I am making everything new. He does not say, I'm making all new things, right? He restores the earth. He restores our lives. There is nothing that can be taken from you that God will not personally and intimately restore.